Hey, we're Alex and Lars. We've recently left land life to live aboard our 37-foot sailboat Navica full-time. Join us as we document the ups and downs of our life on the water as we sail and explore new places. Day. We look so day. tired. I know we are tired. We've been really going really fast. I hope we're not too tired to leave. We've got about 24 hours ahead of us. How do you feel about it? I feel really excited that we've become so used to this life. There's definitely comfort and familiarity there. It's not really leaving the place, it's leaving that. So that's going to be strange because we're just going to be kind of on the go the whole time from now and new everywhere we go. No, it's bittersweet. Hmm. Mm, so what's on the list? What do we have to do? There were still lots of things to do on the boat, but we felt like most of what was left to do, we could do as we went. Our new alternator didn't fit in the end, so we kept the old one in for now whilst we figured out a longer term solution and focused on getting the boat ready to leave that day. All right, the boat is looking ship shape. What time is it? Like 11 something? 11.30, we're supposed to be leaving in about half an hour, but we're running a little bit late, but that's fine. Yeah, we're ready to go. We've just had a mad rush of trying to like sew bags this morning, just get everything put away because there was just loads of stuff out. And now the boat's looking pretty good. It's just a few things just hanging about, but most things are ship shape. The chart table, we haven't been able to see the chart table in about a good month now. And then we've still got our trusty little garage taking everything <laughs> that we don't know where to put. We're gonna have a final coffee with Ed, and yeah, and then we're gonna head off. A bit nervous, but it'll be cool to be underway again and just be going. Got some reading to do on Corsica. Got to figure out where we're going. <laughs> Left a little bit late, but managed. We're off. We have our boat. We're going. No plans of coming back. And this is just us, you know. All of our stuff. It's a weird feeling. It's simultaneously like exciting and liberating, but also kind of nerve-wracking, like terrifying. <laughs> And just like that, we were on our way. We were filled with mixed emotions, both excited and nervous, but looking forward to starting the next chapter of our journey with Corsica as our first stop. We didn't have ideal sailing conditions at the beginning of the passage across and had to engine the first part, but it felt good to be on the move again. What time is it, Lars? It's like five o'clock, maybe? Yeah. So we've been going for about four hours. Uh, we're just about losing sight of France now. We're taking it in turns to do watches and it's my watch now. The sea's just been a bit, it's getting better now, but it's been a, it's been just really steep waves. So Lars has been using this tablet earlier. We might be on a collision course with him. One thirty is what we want to be on now. One twenty-one. All right. Well, it's dark now on our first passage. The wind's picked up beautifully. We've got about fifteen knots of wind, and we're going along at between five and six knots, which is absolutely perfect. And it just couldn't be better, really. Things are chill. The stars are coming out. The wind is nice and warm. There's not too many boats around. It's great. There's one big tanker over there, but I'm watching it on the IAS. It seems okay. Awesome. It's also pretty interesting to see how much power we use at night when we're sailing, because the autopilot's on, and we've got all the nav equipment on. And we're drawing, I'd say on average, about 12 amps. since like 3.30. I'm pretty tired, but uh, we've had some really good wind, sailing 
whole way since Facebook opened it up. In like eighty seven, eight, even nine knots, um, which for us is pretty cool. And we've just got the sun coming up. Trouble knows where I stay and I'm living. Yes, I'm living. Tell me everything, tell me everything, tell me everything. Gonna be alright. It'll be alright. Calvi now, we should be there in about an hour. And it smells really good. It's like pine trees, but like alpine pine. It's incredible. I think it's my favorite time of day. But he won't steal my day, so I'm hoping. And I'm hey. Good morning. It smells amazing. You can smell the island, like deep pine. Come uh, and see the view and everything. Yeah. Wow. Sunset was pretty cool. Sunrise. Sunrise, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I almost got out of bed for it, but then I just couldn't. Oh, your alarm's going off. Oh, uh, down there. Yeah, we bailed out of Calvi. The anchorage is so far away. And then they, they make you pay for um, the mooring boys that are close enough to the town. So we've headed out and we're heading further down south. Shame we don't get to see Calby, but... I mean, it would have been nice to go for a walk. A little walk up in the city. Maybe we'll go down. next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? It's about 20 years time. <laughs> that was like the chance. I think if, we was... had, if we'd had a really beefy dinghy... Yeah. We had like a 10, 20 horsepower. Should I add it to the list? Yeah, I think it's already on the list, isn't it? I don't think it is, Lars. Oh, add it to the list. So, how was it last night, Alex? Uh, it was emotional. Some of us were grumpy, some of us were... You stubbed your toe twice. Oh, yeah, I stubbed my toe same twice. Same toe. Same toe, same place. I mean, it's crazy. It was healing a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we flew. I stepped a little bit. We're gonna need seats. Yeah. But it's cool, we got all the time in the world. Yeah, and now we're here. And we got nice views. That's beautiful. It kind of reminds me of California a bit, actually. Oh, yeah. Kind of like you know? big surf. Yeah. 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 Our cushions got really um, wet yesterday because <laughs> we were healing so much, so there were waves coming over. Um, and we realized that there's water coming in through this hole down here and obviously we were healing so it was just like funneling down towards where we were sitting here and all the cushions were here obviously so yeah we're gonna have to fix that for next passengers because we don't want to have a soggy butt every time <laughs> So we got here, dropped anchor, rigged some shade with just an old sheet that we've got. Just went for a dip. The water is so clear, it's beautiful. My body needed that after just being on passage for a bit. You kind of like cramp over and lean over and things and ah, I just felt like I could just breathe again. Sailed here overnight from mainland France. And you just bring the dinghy up. Okay, what we got? We got campsite. We got the cows. Oh, you see there were cows. Oh, cool. We went for a wander on land and were surprised by how empty the area was. We stumbled upon some old ruins. It turns out there used to be an old mining site here, the Argentella Mines, dating back to the 1870s and which closed down in the 1960s. It was quite eerie to walk through, but so mysterious and we felt like we'd gone back in time. Spooky. Pretty weird. Should we go to the other room?
What was this stuff? Silversmiths, apparently. So I guess this was like the foundry or something? Like you'd have, I don't know, it looks very deliberate. Pretty really cool though with the greenery around. Yeah, we just stumbled upon this dam, which is really random. There's loads of vegetation just growing around it, which is kind of cool though. But we we're just saying, obviously, they've created a whole ecosystem. But another one. so quiet. It's funny because last night we came out on deck in, at night and it just felt like it felt like we were on a lake because obviously this is your view. You don't see that unless you're in the Alps. It's the only reference point we had really. And we're heading down towards Scandola National Park which is supposed to be beautiful. Right up here is Corsica's highest mountain, which is Monte Cinto, I think it's called. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, that's how you pronounce it in Italian, but like, it's French though. So. Um, and it's like over 2,700 meters tall, which is really high. It's basically like the Alps on water here. So far we were blown away by Corsica's coastline and could see immediately why it's nicknamed L'Ile de Beauté, the Island of Beauty. It felt like landing in a huge natural haven. One mountain range makes up two thirds of the island and it's the least populated area in France. We'd only seen a couple of other people so far and we were loving how quiet it was compared to the busy French Riviera that we were used to. It's got this like red rock coming straight out of the water. And it's really, really deep until you get really close. It's actually pretty hard to anchor. Oh yeah? Yeah. You couldn't have moved faster. As soon as we dropped the hook, you were like, where's my wetsuit? Well, this place is perfect for free diving. I mean, it's crystal clear waters and it gets really deep really fast. So you don't need to go swimming out far to get some depth. And it looks like there's going to be a lot of fish. And You're ready to go. I'm almost ready. Yeah. Wetsuit, weights, fins, mask. I'll give you my weight belt when you're done. <laughs>
places. Incredible. All these caves and stuff. Lunch with a view, huh? Oh my god, what a spot. Corsica's delivering so far. There is a little goat. I'm, and I have no idea how he got there. Hello, little goat. <laughs> <laughs> So we gotta get ready to leave. You can't basically you can't anchor here overnight, so to the next place. Okay, I'm ready when you are. This is the Bay of Elbow. Elbow Bay. Elbow Bay. Scandola is a nature reserve on the west coast of Corsica. It's stunning, home to red rock, shake lifts and lots of caves, and the ecosystem is well protected to ensure the area remains in its natural state. Oh, yeah, I think we'll just anchor here. Yeah, it's not too deep. Shallow, sorry. I think it's fine. Nice. Just made it to Girolata. How cool is this place? Like really real didn't expect it, but... Little cruiser's, uh, cruiser's Haven, den. yeah. yeah. Cross it feels between. like a cross between like Africa meets the Caribbean meets um, Europe. It's yeah. really weird. Like, it's just like, kind of like commune-esque feeling. So we're just gonna drop off the bins. It is this way, right? I mean, I don't know. It's at 150 meters. That's awesome, and they even have showers here. You know? Yeah, it's great. I love this place so it's like much. A table, you can sort out all your recycling and stuff. Just enjoying a little glass of vino. Cheers. This really Cheers. feels like the beginning. It does. The weird thing is that we're not on holiday. Every time I feel you close. Trying to create that cream and get home out. Getting there. There it is. It's up. Is this better? Oh, oh that looks so cool. <laughs> Thanks, Lars. So, you just... And Ed. Slot, and off it comes. So neat! I like it. A lot. It works really well. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you like our videos. Join us next time as we continue exploring Corsica, race up a mountain before the post office closes, Lars has a fun job of fixing the toilet, and we have a sweet sail down to Napoleon Bonaparte's hometown, Ajaxio, to pick up our friend Dev who comes to visit us for a few days.